PiCam, an ultra-thin, high-performance, monolithic camera array. The main problem in designing cameras for mobile devices is the limited space for the camera lens. With a larger lens, as in the digital still camera on the left, higher resolution and quality can be achieved. In today's thin phones and mobile devices, there is little space for a large lens with many optical elements. The camera's quality must be compromised in order to deliver a thin industrial design. The focal length must be shortened, and the size of the sensor must be shrunk to fit the camera in the phone. A typical smartphone and the profile of one of today's camera modules are shown on the right. We call today's camera the legacy camera. A high-resolution legacy camera is shown on the left and typically contains a single image sensor integrated with a multi-element lens stack. There is usually an autofocus actuator built into the lens stack to enable autofocusing. A Bayer color filter array on the focal plane enables the pixels to capture color information about the scene. In our array architecture, which is shown on the right, we divide the single lens into multiple lens apertures. Each lens corresponds to a subsensor on an underlying sensor array. Each subsensor is designed to be independently controlled to maximize flexibility, and the individual sensors are optically isolated from one another. Additionally, the color filters are a single color for each camera, which eliminates color crosstalk. The raw data from our camera is read out over an industry standard serial MIPI interface and is processed through a software pipeline to synthesize a high resolution color image. In addition to the color image, we also generate a high resolution range image or depth map. In order to form a final high resolution image, we must correct for the differences in parallax among all the cameras. On the left, we show the resulting image if parallax is not corrected. The final reconstructed scene will have significant artifacts. Therefore, we must compute a depth map shown on the right to determine the depth of objects in the scene. With this depth map, we can correct for the parallax and generate a consistent reconstructed image. On the right, we now show the results of the restoration after the parallax is corrected. Once we have the depth information, the restoration stage of our pipeline can begin. Pixels are fused from each low-resolution camera into a common high-resolution grid. Here, we show pixels from the green cameras being used to seed an initial estimate for the green high-resolution image. The cameras are placed onto the grid, one by one. Here we show the rest of the reconstruction process for the green channel. Once the pixels are fused onto a common grid, any remaining holes are filled and this is our initial estimate for the subsequent map restoration. The initial estimate is then refined using a map estimation algorithm, which incorporates prior information about the camera model and imaging statistics to form an optimal reconstruction of the original scene. Finally, the restored image is shown in color. PiCam enables applications beyond traditional image capture. Because the lenses have a short focal length and hyperfocal distance, the images which are captured are almost entirely in focus. Here we show the all-in-focus image, which is captured by default. The availability of a depth map enables PiCam to compute synthetic focus effects. The images can be refocused after they are captured. Here we synthetically focus at near, middle, and far distances. PiCam can synthetically refocus video as well. Here we maintain focus on the moving target as it moves around a toy train track. In this application, we generate synthetic viewpoints from virtual points along the array's aperture. All the information is captured in a single snapshot, and intermediate virtual viewpoints can be reconstructed digitally in post-processing. The motion parallax seen here allows one to get a qualitative sense of the depth of the scene without having to wear any special glasses. Finally, the depth map allows PiCam to capture and model real-world objects like this Chinese dragon. The points from the depth map are projected into 3D space as a point cloud, which can later be processed with triangulation, mesh generation, and other 3D modeling algorithms. We believe this depth information will enable compelling applications such as Z-keying and augmented reality. This will allow one to mix real-world objects with synthetic objects for applications in both gaming and commerce. We believe that our approach represents a new paradigm in imaging which combines a unique form factor with the ability to compute depth. 
PyCam will enable richer interactions with images going forward. Thanks for your time.